Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everything in between, we have quite the show tonight, quite the show indeed. In one corner, weighing in at three pounds, we have Dr. And in the other corner, weighing in at 10 billion pounds, we have Professor Grob. Hello there, I am Dr. Worm. Perhaps you may have heard of me from my many lawsuits regarding my children's cereal that resulted in many bombings. Well, that is of no consequence, because you might be wondering how I got into this mess. You see, this is a no-holds-barred fist fight, and I am a savvy fighter. Rule one of a fist fight. Fucking, just shoot him with a fucking shotgun, you fucking that he fucking kill him. However, little did this little worm know that their life was about to be flipped upside down when the detective threw a loaded gun into the arena, which is a fair fight in a losing battle for a worm. But a doctor never gives up, and especially not a doctor worm, even when their opponent shouts, I will not surrender! To which the obvious and only response is, Neither will I! Worm! We have a controversial move from Worm here tonight. I don't know if the referees are gonna like this one. It seems they're just throwing, they're just throwing random shit that they have in their bag at them. Uh, is that a, what is that, a, a cocktail mixer and a, uh, what? Is that a fucking spray bottle? Is that allowed? When Worm saw the disfigured, disheveled corpse of their opponent lying there on the ground, they did the most honorable thing that they knew how, and stuffed him right into the garbage chute. But they fucking narrowly got, narrowly got out. The battle raged on, however, neither side willing to relent an inch, until a lizard spectator threw in two pain pills, of which Worm swallowed both, and they heard the dying gasp of Grub. The dying words that they connected with so much. It, oh god, I'm fucking dying. Why did you take all the drugs? I love drugs. I love drugs. Why did you take them? Wait, wait, wait. Stop the fight. Stop. Stop. You like drugs too? <laughs> Yes. I love drugs. That's crazy. And in that moment, Worm had an epiphany. Maybe two beings could come together. Grub and Worm, maybe they could come together on a common issue. Maybe you guys aren't so different. Hissed the lizard referee who had been watching. Yeah, uh, I guess we do. We both agree that we should, uh, beat you up. Get him! As the two skeleton brothers bonded through blows shared on this lizard foe, they felt something stronger than any love that you can have for some anime girl. Stronger than, hold, wait, holy shit, is that a grenade? Worm and Grub buried the hatch much in the same way that most people do when Grub turned Worm's shotgun gold, instantly absolving them of any former sins. Man, you get me, and I've never been got before. I agree. The two consummated this totally radical friendship by sharing the most epic of high fives, dreamt about by the broest of bros. Do you want an edible bar? Asked Professor Grub to Dr. Worm while they were chilling back at Dr. Worm's bar. Worm stood there stupefied for a moment, and so Grub pleaded further. Very simple question. Uh, yeah, duh. Did you even have to ask an edible bar? What do you really Soon the pizza worm. fumes emitted from the bag of bones, and the bar became a pizza bar. Pizza chem dispenser, pizza money, but not pizza pizza. Mm, yes, yes, a most devious scheme. As you can see from my fight with Grub, I am most wounded. And, as it so happens, I need some chemicals from medical. For you see, I shall walk into medical under the guise I need medical attention, but really, I will beg them for their chemicals. It's genius. Gee, oh shit, oh shit, I think, oh god, a doctor just spotted me. I'm not even anywhere near bed, but oh fuck, fuck, fuck. Wait, 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 wait. 
don't tell me. I need an inn at Med Bay so I can weasel some Oculine. Uh, well, actually, I'm the medical director, you know, the medical director of Med Bay, so you could just ask. Said the very obvious medical director that Worm somehow didn't notice because they were too busy thinking about pizza and pizza pizza and pizza pizza. Ow! Ow! Let's go to Med Bay, said the doctor with a vampiric gleam in her eyes. She shone her eyes right into Worm's soul and knocked them unconscious for 30 whole seconds. And in that time, they were able to drag them to Med Bay and get this, treat them. Goddamn vampires fucking knocking you unconscious with their hypnosis and treating you and healing you and sending you fuck you. Upon recovering from the vampire's vampiric gaze, Worm felt much like the heroine in 1979's Dracula, with excellent special effects, by the way, but without the special effects. Mostly in that they were in love with a vampire. Wow, you're horrifying and yet strangely attractive and moody. Worm clattered, desperately searching for the right words to impress this vampire. That means a lot, she said, coming from a man with no skin. I have strong urges to pawn for your love with an equally powered super mutant of equal hunkiness. But which will I choose? Anyway, strap her on, Doc. Extra morphine. Worm said because there was a dead space bear lying on the floor of Medbay, and it's a sin to let dead space bear arms go to waste. So they were going to get their left arm replaced with a space bear arm so they could be half worm, half bear, all amazing. Now, the extra morphine that they had requested was now coursing through Dr. Worm's veins, about 30 units from what I guesstimated, which is enough to sedate a whale or a very large dog, and their tongue was beginning to slip and loosen, letting forth their true thoughts. Bear arm! Also, I wasn't joking with what I said about those eyes, medical director. The, the drugs, I cannot stop. Worm sputtered, desperately trying to stop, but also keeping it going. Take me to your castle, please. As the doctors inquired how exactly Worm was still awake with that much morphine in them, as they were saying willpower, they passed out, which I think is pretty funny. Upon waking up from the surgery, they had a fresh new bare arm, but more worryingly, they had lost a lot more calcium than was to be expected from a surgery that simple. And the MD kept talking about things like, sorry for draining you so much. And everyone was like, why did the MD suck your blood? So things were getting kind of weird for Worm. Professor Grubb began shaking Worm, checking all the bones were there, making sure everything was all right. And Worm exclaimed, I got a kick-ass arm. Also, I'm feeling woozy. And also, that medical director's eyes are so pretty. The medical director sucked the calcium straight from your bones. I saw him, exclaimed Grub in a voice that keeps changing because I can't keep it consistent. Him. Wait, her. Who knows with humans? Soon, Worm was back to tending the bar, and Grub was back to making food in the kitchen, because technically, they were both bartender and chef, respectively, and had to do a little bit of their jobs. When both of them spied a clown, clamoring down ghost chili peppers like they were fucking popcorn, they both stopped what they were doing and watched. Oh, what's this? They're super deadly peppers. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh please stop. Oh, gosh, I care about your safety. Don't eat those peppers that you are choking and throwing up on because your body is attempting to save you from the malice that you are con Yeah, don't- stop! Oh no! I'm in danger! Yes! Not even seconds after Worm said that did they eat another one and were instantly exploded into a pile of confetti, organs, and all of their stuff combined into one bloody mess. And dead! Worm was patrolling and strolling around the maintenance tunnels, like you do, getting burned and not breathing oxygen, when suddenly the most Space Station 13 thing that could possibly happen, happened. Their game crashed. Hey there everybody, Quario here. We're going to take this little intermission because I'm about to make you watch the entirety of the loading back into Space Station 13. I hope you got some popcorn, maybe you got some drink or something with you, because it's going to be a while. Hey, Polly, can you turn on the smooth jazz? Oh, that's that's great, Polly. Thank you. So anyway, um, so I was walking down the street the other day, and I saw this really fat-looking raccoon. I was going to work, and um, and this raccoon's really fucking fat. It turns out it has a name. His name's Rigby. 
and the other day at work, uh, I heard a bunch of banging no noises in the garbage where I was taking out the garbage to close. And I look inside, and it's Rigby. And a couple days later, he's like, he's still in there, and he died of dehydration. It's a great story. Um, anyway, I, the game should be loaded by now. When Worm came to, they were in a dark alley with the person they knew was a vampire. This is a recipe for something that can only end with murder. And yet... Oh. Oh, it's... it's you. Hilde. Hilde, this could never work. You don't see. I'm a skeleton with a bare arm, and you're a super mutant with pretty eyes and drugs. But... but it can work. I'm a weird parasite. Oh? You too? This tugged a twinge at Worm's very poetic and tragic backstory in that they're a parasitic worm. That's it. So that's all you care about, huh? The drugs? That's all you ever care about. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, I mean a little. Uh, okay, a good bit. Oh, uh, but, 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 but the hair and the eyes, that, that part of it. And uh, uh, the fact you're... Your bone chill, your skin is cold like ice, like my. Hilde frowns at this, and Worm has already made up their resolve. They're definitely going to lie about how this went down. You know what? You know what, Dr. Worm? You're right. It wouldn't work out. <laughs> this struck Worm like a blow to the chest, or maybe like having all of your calcium drained by a vampire, but I, who knows? They flopped on the ground like a fish. It was embarrassing. I was hoping you would talk me out of it! They exclaimed, desperately prying for anything. The exit? It's over there. Hilde sniffed, somehow feeling more actual emotion as a vampire than Worm has in their entire human life. Worm crawled along the ground towards the exit. Kinda like, you know, on the ground like a... <laughs> Don't come back, Hilde shouted from across the dark alley. To this dingy alley? Why would I? To look into your morphine color? Oh, sh I gotta, I gotta go. Worm was looking for Professor Grubb. They'd have been apart for too long. Their powers were fading. When a suspiciously heavy fridge came crawling up escape with the captain dragging it. He said something like, How we made a great escape and Worm could hear muffled clattering from inside the refrigerator. Oh, hey! Speak of the idiot! Worm quipped with the smartest possible thing that they could think of. Says the fool! Professor Grubb responded, both of them using their entire mental capacities to think of insults. Listen, I can't get out. The tax people! That sent a shiver down Worm's tiny miniaturized collection of spines that they keep in their bag. They're after me! Grub continued to explain. This fridge, I believe, is safe. Ah, hell tax or normal tax? The worm queried because they knew one of those pretty well. Ah, I'm a licensed hell lawyer, you see. Grub pondered this for a moment, looking at all their forged tax documents and cooked books that were actually cooked. Normal tax and a teensy bit of hell tax, I believe. Now, listen. Worm explained. The hell tax, that's easy to get. I can get you out of that. But you got the space IRS on you, Bonesy? Are you fucking joking with me? The space IRS? Yes, shouted a very confused and scared grub. You can't fuck with the space IRS, he resigned sadly. You know they collect on family members slash bitter rivals, right? I'm boned, said the skeleton. Listen, grub said in a moment of clarity. We can do this thing called... Tax fraud and put you as a friend, my dear. Yes, yes, good idea. We'll make a new, better life inside this free. Wait, that's that's not what you were talking about, was it? While they were doing some minute adjustments to their immaculate plan to evade taxes, Worm spotted something that they really didn't want to see right now. Oh God, it's my ex-lover. Well, Worm had two choices right now. Number one, admit they got rejected by a vampire, or two, lie. It was a fling. A sweet romance. Pivoting immediately from hopeless romantic loss into one-upping Professor Grubb, Worm said, Your cold bones would know nothing. Nothing of the tender embrace between a skeleton and a vampire. 
cold, Grub responded, as if that was the most offensive thing that Worm had just said. Yes, we're in a fridge and you've been in here longer than me, thus you're colder than me. Oh, that makes sense, Professor Grub responded, and the tension was immediately gone. I was always the smarter one of whatever we are, brothers, former roommates, etc. Fuck you! How are you, the professor? Fuck! I'm gonna kick your stupid fucking grub ass! The refrigerator shook and bellowed from the force of the duel that was going inside, which was super amazing and cool, and you totally couldn't see it at all. And they were, like, jumping off the walls and, like, doing, like, handstands and fucking punching each other. It was crazy. And in a moment, they were free. The fridge door was open. And closed. And trapped. Alright, now they're permanently trapped in a fridge. However, Grub and Worm soon made up again, and they resumed their favorite pastime, assaulting strangers. They had locked some random person named Rico Stinky, I think, in a fridge, and they were berating him, and it was everyone was having a great time. Say it. Say, say, it, say, the, say the, the word. word is Worm. Say it. No, no that's, say it. that's your word. Say I, the word. No, my word's not Worm. The man was kicking and screaming inside the fridge. Everyone was just kind of staring at him. It was great. Nobody was helping. Wait. Wait, your word isn't Worm? Worm exclaimed, very alarmed. Or I'll cram iridium spaghetti into your fridge, Hey, said Grub, because he was Italian for a second for some reason. It's a made of metal, come on! And the verbal beratement continued to the poor man in the locker. And I'm sure nothing, nothing will go wrong because it's the escape shuttle. And what goes wrong on the escape shuttle, ever? Like, do you know anything? I don't know anything. Oh my, is that a fucking bomb?